Amen. Come on, palapakan natin si Lord. Let's give God the highest praise that He deserves. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Come on. your goodness my heart is overcome how could I begin to thank you for everything you've done for you keep on loving me and you cause my heart to sing oh yeah you make me come alive again
Let's continue to be in the presence of God this afternoon. Just invite the presence of the Lord right now. Wherever you are, just begin to lift up your hands. And just begin to pray. Just begin to sing songs to God. once again this time we will declare all together that we are who he says he is amen I'm a child of God yes I am whom the sun sets free always free
Come on, church, continue to praise. Continue to worship God in this place. Come on, church, close your eyes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pour out your love today, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Fullness of internal promise. Staring in your sons and daughters, earth revealing heaven's wonders, spirit come, spirit come. What you spoke is now one full day. Children shall be ordained. Dreams awaken in this moment. Spirit God, Spirit God, move it out. Let your love run. Continue burning. 
this Jesus. Come on, church, raise up your hands to God. Declare this song with all of your heart. Yes, Jesus. Let our hearts continue burning. For our King is soon returning. As we hold to this assurance, Spirit come. Jesus for this afternoon, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Continue to move in our lives, Lord. Lord, we acknowledge your presence in this place, Lord. Move, Lord. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for your word, Lord. We lift your name on high, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sige, palakpan po natin si Lord. Church, clap your hands to God. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Sige, you may be seated. Kayo po yung makakaupo na. Magandang hapon po sa bawat isa. I strongly believe that uh, God will going to do something great in our lives. No, Kailangan lang pong maging bukas ang ating mga puso 
no, ang ating kaisipan sa hapon pong ito. Pinabati ko po lahat ng mga nanonood no, from Baguio and Pangasinan and Pampanga, Macau, Hong Kong, uh, Australia, and then um, saan pa ba? Canada and sa Middle East. So those who are watching on live stream, no, I strongly believe that gala that God allow you to tune in in this live stream because He's about to do something great in your life. Can we pray? Let us uh, close our eyes and let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here, to be tuned in in this live stream. For I strongly believe, God, that you are going to do something great in our lives. And I also pray, Lord, those who are watching with their family, that you would do something great in the midst of every people and every families that are watching today. We thank you, we love you, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, amen. Okay, so, good afternoon po, no? So, yung message po natin, no? Um, if you have your Bible, open it in the book of John chapter 3. So, dyan po yung pinaka-main passage po natin sa John chapter 3, no? Verse 1 to 7. But before that, no? I would just like to read uh, uh, first, oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, rather. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Okay? Let us examine ourselves whether if we are in the faith. Test yourselves. So let us test ourselves. No, Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. So in this passage, no, that uh, it is very clear that God is, uh, in, in 2 Corinthians, no, Paul is telling us that we should examine ourselves. No? Our faith. No? The testing that we are, that we are experiencing. No? So there should be a realization. No? Do you not realize that Christ is in you? So kailangan po natin maintindihan yan that as we are hearing the message today, let us examine ourselves, our faith, and as a uh, testing, no, as this crisis, as pandemic is happening, no, the quarantine is still happening, then let us realize that Christ is in you. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, Christ is in you. Amen. Ang ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo ay suma sa atin. No, I would just like to preach to the title, to the title, no, three kinds of birth experience. Three kinds of birth experience. So meron po tayong tatlong kapanganakan. No, na dapat pong maintindihan. Okay? Una po yung born in the flesh, and then yung born in the spirit, and then yung born in the ministry. So, yan po yung tatlo na yan na pag-uusapan natin. Three kinds of birth experience that every one of us no, should experience this birth. Okay? So, let us uh, continue reading. Let us just go back to our main text in John chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. This passage is very, very um, familiar no, to all of us. But uh, I would just like to read it. No? Uh, now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. That's read on verse 2. Okay, si Nicodemus po ito, yung pag-uusapan natin. He came to Jesus at night and said, So pumunta si Nicodemus, gabi na yan, sa kung saan si, G- si Jesus nanunuluyan, Rabbi, which means teachers, teacher. We know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. So ito yung sabi ni Nicodemo. Then verse 3, let's read on verse 3. Let's continue reading on verse 3. In reply, this is what Jesus replied, no? Declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again born from above no in other in other meaning verse 4 how can a man this is what uh, nicodemus said how can a man be born when he is old nicodemus asked surely he cannot enter a second time in his mother's womb to be born so hindi na po pwede kung kayo matanda na pa paano pa babalik no dun sa sinapupunan ulit ng nanay niya Sempre literally that's what uh, that's what it means no that's why yun yung sagot nitong ni Nicodemus a teachers of the law a Pharisees then verse 5 
Verse 5 says, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Ito na naman, no? I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and, and spirit. So, yung kanina, lest a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. No? Dito naman sa verse 5, unless a man be born of water and the spirit cannot enter no? the kingdom of God. Of God. So verse 6, tingnan natin sa verse 6, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Verse 7, you should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. In verse 5, we will going to, to go back on verse 5. The, the word says, unless he is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So what does it mean? No, Unless be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So sa contextual exegesis, no, yung kapag in natin ito, by the way, ex- exegesis no, comes from the Greek word exegete, which means, which means to draw out, like to draw out into the well. Meron kang hukayin, no? When we exegete the passage to draw the meaning out, ibig sabihin, titingnan natin ano ba yung born of water, no? Yung born of spirit. Siyempre, yung yung banal na spirit 'yon, no? Yung uh, we are born again, no? Born in the spirit. Pero yung born of water, titingnan natin yung context niya, no? What does it mean to be born of water? So to see what the text says is to see what the context is saying. So in other words, para maintindihan natin yon, no? We should read the verse before, yung verse 5 ano yon, verse 4. And then after ng verse 5 that is verse 6. So sabi ng verse 4, ito yung before, no? How can a man be born when he's old? Nicodemus said, surely he cannot. He cannot enter a second time into the mother's womb to be born. So ito yung ito yung text nitong ni ano ni 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 Nicodemus paano siya pababalik literally dun sa womb ng kanyang nanay. Then tingnan natin yung verse 6 no para maintindihan natin yung verse 5. Okay. Sabi ng verse 6, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. So pag binalikan natin yung verse 5, no? If we will go back to that uh, verse 5 particularly what we are looking here is the word born of water. No? Ibig sabihin ng born of water, hindi yan, hindi yan patungkol sa water baptism. Kasi tayo ay naligtas dahil sa biyaya at dahil sa pananampalataya natin sa Panginoon. We are saved by grace and through faith. It is not through water baptism. Although water baptism, no, it's a public declaration that uh, we will going to follow Jesus, no, whatever it costs, no, turning back, the old has gone and the new has come. So, yung ibig sabihin ng water baptism. But, yung unless a man be born of water, it doesn't pertain to a water baptism. No? Titingnan natin dyan, no? to, to be particular, no? makikita natin in, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. O, bago natin puntahan yun, no? yung it, it pertains to a natural birth no isa isa ito no yung natural birth natural born born in the flesh kasi nabasa natin sa verse 6 no flesh gives birth to flesh but another thing diba kapag ipapanganak ang isang bata diba pag ipapanganak ang isang bata ang isang sanggol meron munang magbo-burst out yun yung water diba yung water na mauna muna yung tubig and then yung bata lalabas so and then another thing no, ito, ito yung isa sa mga interpretation nito na which is will going to help us to really understand yung born of water in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. No, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, Paul is talking about Jesus cleansing the church, no? Kung paano i-cleanse ni Jesus yung 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 church, no? It says here, no, in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, now that he might sanctify, yan. now 
Sabi dito, Ephesians 5.26, no? I'm reading on King James Version. Now, the, uh, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So, kung makikita natin dito, yung born of water, no? yung washing, washing by the water through the word, no? it speaks about something connected with the word of God. That unless we are born of water, unless we are washed and cleansed by the word of God, then we cannot experience born again. The time of born again. And we can only experience born again when we hear a word that is being preached. Kapag merong nang, nagsalita, kapag merong nangaral ng salita ng Diyos. And another thing, in Ezekiel 36 verse 25, it says, Then I will sprinkle clean water unto you, and ye will be clean. Your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. So, magigita natin is sprinkling of water, and then your filth will wash away. Something that is connected in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Let us also look on First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. It says here, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So in this passage, that uh, it's strengthened that we are born again when we hear the word. No? We are, uh, kasi siyempre, makakakilala ka sa Panginoon, tatanggapin mo pang si Panginoong Eso Kristo kapag merong word na naipangaral, no? kapag meron tayong gospel na narinig. No, which is, uh, doon tayo mabuborn again, doon tayo maliligtas. Kaya nga, yung born of uh, water, no, it speaks about no, the cleansing, sabi ng binasa natin kanina, no, cleansing by the water through the word. And then in here, we are born of uh, incorruptible seed. No? That's, the word of, that's the word of God. So, the first thing na dito sa, ano, balikan natin yung verse 6. Ito yung tiningnan natin kasi ano ba yung born no born of water so maliwanag na sa atin that it is not the born uh, hindi yun yung water baptism but it is born no by washing and then cleansing of the word of god okay so verse 6 tingnan natin flesh gives birth to flesh but spirit gives birth to spirit kaya nga dito natin nakuha yung dalawang points natin in this particular passage it's very clear no, that there are two kinds of birth experience that each and every one of us must undergone. So, number one, yung born in the flesh. Ito yung natural birth or physical birth. No, ito yung biological family. Kaya meron kang kung sino yung nanganak sa'yo, yun yung nanay mo. At yun yung may tatay ka, yung uh, kasama dun sa pag uh, uh, likha sa atin no yung nanay tatay natin yun yung born in the flesh yun yung physical family na meron tayo ako i belong to a giao clan no giao family so meron akong tatay meron akong nanay so yun yung una na gusto kong tingnan natin no that uh, yung pamilya yun yung nagte-take care sa atin nung ipinanganak ka no nung pinang- pinanganak kayo sa tayo yung physical birth no Meron tayong kapanganakan, di ba? Ako, January 1, 1980. Ayan. So, sa pamilya, meron, meron tayong makikita na merong pinuprovide sa atin. Those are the basic needs. No? Basic needs ng, ng pangangailangan sa isang pamilya. Ito yung pagkain. No? Siyempre, when you belong to a certain family, no? meron kang nung bata ka, gatas, hanggang sa uh, naging... Uh, Uma, natuto ka ng kumain na, then yung, yung mga, ano natin, di ba, yung hanggang sa tumanda ka na, nag, uh, kaya mo nang kumain, di ba, yung certain level of food habang lumalaki. No? And then also the shelter, dyan tayo tumitira, may bahay, di ba, and then merong clothing, hindi silang bumili ng mga damit natin, and then of course, they send us to, to schools no, for our education. So, this is what physical family gives us. Tandaan natin, kaya kung saan ka pinanganak, yun ang pamilya mo. 
Ay, yun ang nanay mo. At kung sino yung bumuntis sa nanay mo, yun ang tatay mo. So, yun yung physical birth, no? Kaya, yun yung pinuprovide yung kanina. And then, tingnan natin na uh, connection with the uh, spirit, no? Gives birth to spirit. So, ito yung born in the spirit. Ito yung binasa natin kanina, no? Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. No? Unless a man be born of water, he born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. No, born in the spirit, no, we will, ito yung ano, na born again tayo. Sabi nga kanina, born of water, yun sa word ni Lord na narinig natin. Ne? And then yung sa spirito ng Diyos, no, na nag sa ating spirito. Kasi, uh, nung hindi pa tayo mana ng palataya, no, we are spiritually dead. But when we believe and when we surrender our lives and we receive Jesus Christ, as our personal Lord and Savior, then yung spirit natin na-revive. So dito, titingnan natin, the first experience is born in the flesh. Yung pangalawa, yung born in the spirit. Or we are born spiritually. No? In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, this is what it says, The man without the spirit does not accept the things that comes from the spirit of God. So yung bagay, no? Oh, tuloy, tuloy ko lang muna to. For they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand, he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. In Tagalog, nababasahin ko sa Tagalog. Ngunit, ang taong ayon sa laman ay hindi tumatanggap ng mga bagay ng Espiritu ng Diyos. Sapagkat ang mga ito ay kamangmangan sa kanya at hindi niya nauunawa sapagkat ang mga yaon ay sinisiyasat ayon sa spirito. So there are things in our lives, no? No, if we are just born in the flesh, tayo pinanganak physically, born naturally, no? Na sa ating pamilya. There are times hindi natin maintindihan yung mga bagay na pang spiritual. Kasi dito sa 1 Corinthians chapter 2 2 verse 14, very clear. Sabi dito, the man without the spirit does not accept the things that comes from the spirit of God. So, yung spiritual consciousness nangyayari yan kapag tayo ay born again. No? Sa pamamagitan ng gospel na, na, na narinig natin, sa pamamagitan ng, ng, ng mensahe, no? ng mabuting balita na narinig natin and then tinanggap natin ang ating Panginoon, then na born again tayo, nagkaroon tayo ng, binigyan tayo ng Spirito ng Diyos. No? Ito yung nabuhay. I mean, no? yung Spirito ng Diyos. At doon lang natin, maintindihan yung mga bagay na pang spiritual. Kaya pansinin ninyo, yung mga ba, nung mga hindi pa tayo nakakilala sa Panginoon, wala pa tayong relasyon sa Panginoon, tingnan nyo ang, ang reaction natin, di ba? Tingnan nyo how we persecute people na hindi natin pinapahalagaan yung mga bagay na pang spiritual. Why? Because only spiritual things, no? only spiritual people can understand spiritual things. Because spirit gives birth to spirit. Let us, let us look also in Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36, let us start on 26 up to 27. This is what it says. I will give you a new heart, bagong puso, and put a new spirit in you. Okay? So put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So tingnan muna natin ito. I want you... I would just like you to focus on this, no? God will going to give us a new heart and put a new spirit and God will going to remove a heart of stone kasi bakit? Dati, nung if we are just born in the flesh, wala tayong kaunawaan, wala tayong consciousness about the spiritual things, no? And look at this. God will going to give us a new heart and put a new spirit in us and God will going to remove a heart of stone and God will going to give us the heart of flesh. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? Yung pusong bato, tatang papalitan ng Lord at bibigyan niya ng puso na laman. Ibig sabihin niyan, a heart that is so receptive, the heart that is longing for God, for spiritual things. And let, let's continue reading on verse 27. And I will put my spirit in you. Tingnan niyo, ha? And I will put my spirit in you. Why? To move you to follow my decrees. So that is the very purpose. That's why God put His Spirit in us. So that we can follow His decrees. And then, be careful to keep my laws. Para makasunod tayo sa Panginoon at ito'y 
ating magawa at magawa natin yung kanyang kalooban sa ating mga buhay. We can only do this no, if the Spirit of God no, is upon us. Kaya nga, Spirit gives birth to Spirit. So, God gave us the Spirit here. Sabi dito, I will put my Spirit in you so that we can follow and carefully do His laws. So, makikita natin dito, no, nung yung buhay natin na ipinanganak, yung, yung born in the flesh, and then itong born in the spirit, makikita natin yung difference. That's why, kapag nag-ano tayo, no, kapag nag-evaluate tayo, our life before we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, no, the, the, the very first time that when we hear the word and then we surrender our lives, we receive Him, then the Spirit of God came upon us. Amen? And then, meron na tayong conviction na meron tayong, meron sa puso natin na, na, na nagko-convict sa atin na kapag merong mali, na hindi natin gagawin. There is something na that we can feel the voice of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit na if it is not His will, then we feel something. Diba? Pero yon wala. Hindi natin nararamdaman yon before. We are not feeling that before kasi no, hindi, hindi naman tayo no, born in the Spirit. So, if you are born in the Spirit, no, you belong to a spiritual family. You also belong to a family of believers or what we call a church family. Kung sinasabi ko kanina, nung una, no, kapag you are born in the flesh, meron kang pamilya. May tatay ka, may nanay ka, may mga kapatid ka, and then meron kang mga relatives. So, if you are born in the Spirit, so you have also a family. That is uh, your spiritual family, the family of believers, or what we call a church family. At kung kanina, no, merong food, shelter, and then yung, yung education no, na, na pinuprovide ng pamilya, dito, sen, dito rin sa spiritual family, ipinanganak ka no, sa spirito, na pinanganak ka na ikaw ay na-born again. Born again is not a religion. No, born again is, a rela- is an experience that everyone who believes on Jesus Christ must experience it. Amen. It's not a religion. In fact, yung binasa natin kanina, di ba, sa John chapter 3, it's just uh, answer. It's just Jesus' answer to the Pharisees, to the to Nicodemus. But that question is very important because it relies on the answer of our Lord Jesus Christ, how we will be born again, how we will experience new life. No, Sabi ko nga kanina yung verse 6 ng John chapter 3 verse 6, flesh gives birth to flesh but spirit gives birth to spirit. That's why, no, in our spiritual family, we have also a father and we have also a mother. Those, those are your pastor. Yun yung mga pastor, no? And then, may mga kapatid ka, yung mga family of believers. Diba? Meron kang kuya, yung mga cell leaders. Diba? Yung magkakapatid, diba? Spiritually, yung mga kasama natin sa cell group at yun sa large gathering natin, no, every sa Sunday service, kapag meron na tayong physical gathering. But we all know, no, hindi pa tayo nagpi-physical gathering. No, nandito muna tayo ngayon sa sa online, di ba? Online preaching, online uh, live streaming. But I would just like to focus also na kung ang physical family or born in the flesh, you have you belong to a certain family, no? So meron ding responsibility 'yon, no? At ito rin sa church, meron ding responsibility, no? the church family no will provide a basic spiritual needs your basic spiritual needs ano yan spiritual food no ipo-provide ng spiritual family or church family yung spiritual food natin no imagine kung ikaw ay pinanganak walang nagpakain sa physically so later mag- magkakasakit ka and later on mamamatay ka physically the same thing spiritually no if we are born in the spirit we have a spiritual family. So, they provide your basic spiritual needs. That is, the first thing is spiritual food. Meron tayong pangangailangan. No, yung spiritual food, yan yung salita ng Panginoon that will help us, no, to nourish us, to strengthen us as a, as a believer. No, merong pastor, merong, merong cell leader, yan yung mga ati mo, at merong ang kasama. Kaya meron tayong cell groups, di ba? Meron tayong mga training and how we do cell groups how we how we do sunday service online there is a food that is available 
on the table today and that is the Word of God, our spiritual food. Yan yung magpapalakas sa atin. Yan yung magbibigay ng balanse no, sa ating nutrisyon physically nung tayo ay mga ipinanganak at even ngayon and spiritually then para sa ating paglago, para sa healthy spiritual life natin, we need spiritual food. That is the Word of God. Number two, also, spiritual shelter. Spiritual family is just like our shelter. Kapag umuulan, kapag bumabagyo, di ba, meron kang tahanan. Di ba? Ganon din, kapag may unos ng buhay, may bagyo ng buhay, meron kang simbahan na pupwedeng magprotekta sa'yo. Na pupwedeng, na pupwedeng, uh, uh, mag, ma, pwede mong lagakan. And the, the third thing is spiritual covering and protection. No, sa church, may covering. Hindi yung pagkukonsinte, but covering and protection para hindi mapahamak. Okay? Para hindi yan, hindi yan ano, hindi yan ma, mag, mag-isa at walang kasama. Ganon din sa pamilya, di ba? Physically. Kaya may kapatid ka, may kuya ka, may nanay ka, no, nandyan yan parating nakaalalay. The same thing with the church. So, yan po yung, yan po yung meron tayo, no? Kaya yung born in the spirit, meron kang pamilya spiritual. Pang-apat po, no, part nitong born in the spirit, merong spiritual education. Kung yung physical education sinisend tayo sa school, ito ho merong education, no? Ito po yung may mga trainings tayo, may mga mentorings tayo, may mga process po tayo na para po tayo ay ma-educate sa salita ng Panginoon hanggang pong tayo ay hindi lang naging mana ng palataya, kundi tayo ay naglilingkod din sa Panginoon. Tandaan po natin na we are saved to serve others. So, alam niyo, no? uh, God created the church no? to help us fulfill our God-given purpose in life. Ulitin ko po yan, no? God created the church to help us fulfill our God-given purpose in life. So, kaya po may simbahan, kaya may church family to help us to fulfill our God's given purpose in our lives. Kaya tingnan nyo, no? Yung buhay natin dati na, yes, we are born in the flesh, no? but when we are born in the spirit, no, meron tayong pamilya, spiritual family, na tumutulong sa atin para malaman natin ang purpose at hindi lang malaman, kundi magawa yung purpose natin sa buhay. Okay, alam nyo ba na, in my personal experience, no? In my personal experience, no? The church helped me to know and to love God. Ito ko yung natutunan ko personal. The church helped me to know and to love God. No, nung ako po yung nag-church, ito po yung natutunan ko. Nakilala ko ang Panginoon at hindi lang nakilala ang Panginoon, kundi natutunan ko kung paano ko siya mahalin. Kasi pala, siya nang unang nagmahal sa akin. So, the church also helped me to center my life to God. Kaya ito yung, ito yung mga benepisyo na kapag tayo ay nasa Panginoon, kapag tayo ay nasa church family. No, the church helped me no, to make Jesus and His Word as my foundation in life. No, ang simbahan ho, ang spiritual family, tinulungan po ako nito para si Jesus at ang kanyang salita ang maging pundasyon ng aking buhay. Hindi yung mga material na bagay na meron ako, hindi yung mga, uh, hindi yung mga achievements or mga material things that this, this world no can offer but hindi eh kundi yung natuto ako na si Jesus at ang kanyang salita at ang maging pundasyon ng buhay ko no and then the church helped me also to develop my faith and confidence in God dito ako na develop yung na develop yung pananampalataya ko sa Panginoon and then yung my total confidence my trust no sa Panginoon di ba yung nung ano di ba nung wala tayo na hindi tayo mananampalataya we are not yet born again We don't have a relationship, no? We don't understand spiritual things. Okay lang yan, eh. Di ba? Basta manalangin ka lang, sasamahan ka ni Lord. Pero sa church, no, will help me, or oh, that helps me to develop my faith and confidence in God. And then, ito pa, no? Ito yung, yung mga natutunan ko, no? Nung ako po ay sumama at nagkaroon ng spiritual na pamilya. That's our church, no? The church helped me to grow and learn, No? the purpose in my life. So natuto po ako. Natuto ako at lumago, no? Na, na natutunan ko yung purpose ni Lord sa buhay ko, no? Naggrow ako until until I became a pastor right now. 'Di ba? So dati hindi naman ako pastor eh. Dati isa akong yung people na maloko, 'di ba? Abang during Sunday service nandoon lang ako sa tech booth, 'di ba? Hindi kami masyadong nakikinig noon, 
So that's my life before. Yes, I go to the church. But uh, I, 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 I did not grow. Diba? Pero, yun nga, no? Pero nung sa simula, hindi ako nag-grow. Pero paunti-unti, na may nagsising in sa puso ko. Tama? Nandun ako, pero hindi ako na natiling bansot. Until to the point, no? Not bansot in, in a sense na physically. Pero I'm saying about spiritual things, no? Dati ako nag-aaten, di ba? Marami akong natututunan. And at the same time, ang nangyari, nag-grow. Nag-grow ako at marami akong natutunan. Yung purpose pala ng Lord sa akin, hindi para mag-artista, kundi ang purpose pala ni Lord sa akin ay para magpastor at maglingkod sa Kanya at maglingkod sa iba, sa kapwa, sa inyo, sa ating lahat. The church provides shelter to me in times of rainy and shaky moments of my life. Kasi sa buhay natin, hindi naman lahat maayos kaagad eh. No, may mga trials, may mga challenges, may mga pagsubok, 'di ba? Lalo na nung kabataan ako, love life, 'di ba? Uh, buti na lang may church eh. Buti na lang may church na umalalay sa akin, no? Lalo na nung nung hindi mo alam kung anong kukunin mong course, 'di ba? May mga nag advice sa iyo, may mga may mga may mga leader, may mga pastor na naaalalay sa iyo. Sa atin, we have a discipler, you have a cell leader, a primary school, and also, no? We, we are here to help you. The church helped me to mature no, in my spirituality. No? Ito yung nangyari sa akin when, when I stay in the church, in a spiritual family. It helps me to mature. The church helped me to be faithful to God and to others. Dito ko natutunan, no, no, na, nandito na ako sa spiritual family. Kasi nga, di ba, kapag nasa spiritual family ka, yung apat na benefits nandun yon. At dito, dito ko iniisa-isa ko sa sarili ko, at marami pa to eh, pero uh, konti na lang ang sinulat ko. The church helped me to be faithful to God and to others. No? Natuto ko pa paano maging faithful kay Lord. No, in areas of my time, talent and treasure, no, I see to it that I will be faithful to the Lord. And and I believe if you are faithful to the Lord, it's easy to be faithful to other people. No? Kapag faithful ka kay Lord in your talent, in your treasure, in your time, no, lahat ng meron tayo, we are faithful to the Lord, no? We can be also faithful to others especially to the person who you love no kaya and then the church helped me to be confident in speaking and relating to other people sa church ako na train pa paano mag magsalita i can still imagine during the first time na nasa cell group kami daddy ball is our uh, of course our pastor no tapos siya yung cell leader namin nung nag-ship kami from bible study to cell group no Then, ano bang ikaiba noon Bible study sa cell group? Sa Bible study kasi, isa lang nagsasalita. Sa cell group, facilitator. But in cell group, we study the Bible. Pero ang kaibahan, nagpapasilitate lahat nagsasalita. Si Daddy Paul noon, I still remember sa Panipon San Fernando, Pampanga. He is our pastor, and not just a pastor. During that moment, he is our cell leader. No? Cell leader ng mga leaders. Okay? So, I still remember the moment yung parang popcorn na magsasalita. Hindi talaga ako magsasalita eh. Pero kapag dumating na dun sa point na talaga nakapagsalita na sila, dahil ako pinakabata eh, pag tinuro nila sa akin, wala akong choice. Eh, wala akong choice. I still remember that moment nung kapag nasa akin na, ang dami kong gustong sabihin sa isip ko, tapos kapag sinasabi ko na parang nauutal-utal pa ako, di ba? Do you still remember that moment? Nung first time ka na sumama sa cell group, di ba? Tapos tatanungin ka, o anong opinion mo, paano natutunan mo? Diba, paano nang usap si Lord sa'yo? Paano mo i-apply? Anong nabago sa'yo? Diba? Kapag iikot-ikot silang ganyan, diba, parang ang dami mo nang gustong sabihin. Pero pag ikaw na, parang nautal-utal ka. I still remember na itong pisngi ko gumagalaw na ganyan. No? Sobrang nervous ba? Diba? But you know what? The church helped me to be confident in speaking and relating to other people. No, kaya ako nakakapag-preach. Kaya ako nakakapag-share sa inyo ngayon. Because of the, my church family helped me. My spiritual family helped me. Ama, may nagturo sa akin, may umalalay sa akin. The church helped me to know and understand God's vision, no God's vision for my life. No, nasa church, sa church family, no. Natutunan ko at naintindihan ko kung ano yung vision ng Diyos sa buhay ko. No, it's not it's not just my dream, it's not just my my goals and my vision. It's no longer about my my dream, it's no longer about my vision, but it's all about God's dream in my life. It's far better, no? Beautiful and excellent and powerful. Diba? So, doon ko nakita to. Alam nyo, 
the truth is no institution, organization can help you center your life around God but the church. Wala yung institusyon. Pag pumunta ka sa, sa club, pananood ka ng sini, pumunta ka ng mall, nagbulakbol ka, hindi naman kanila matutulungan para masentro mo yung buhay mo sa Diyos. Spiritual family ang tutulong sa inyo. God did not put us on earth to be self-centered, but to be God-centered. Ulitin ko yan, ha? God did not put us on earth to be self-centered. Hindi lang tayo nilikha ng Diyos na nandito tayo ngayon para maging sentro tayo. No, we will be self-centered, we will be uh, selfish. No, hindi ganon. That God put us on earth to be God-centered. Kundi yung buhay, na, buhay natin at ang purpose natin nakasentro na sa Panginoon. Yun yung natutunan ko. Yun yung mga bagay na benepisyo na nangyari sa buhay ko. Then how do you know God is the center of your life? Paano mo ngayon malalaman no as a spiritual uh, uh, part of a spiritual family no as a born uh, born in the spirit no kasi ma-identify natin ito eh no kung tayo ay Kristiyano na tayo mahana ng palataya na dapat nating ito yung ating nakikita at ito yung mga benepisyo at ito yung pupwedeng mangyari sa sa atin kung yun ay nangyari sa akin maaring ding mangyari sa iyo okay so how do you know God is the center of your life paano mo ngayon malalaman na si Jesus ang sentro ng buhay mo number one, God is the top priority of your life. So, malalaman natin na si Jesus ang sentro ng buhay natin kapag siya ang pinakapangunahin sa buhay natin. He is not number one, he is not number two, number three, number four. He is the number one. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Every decision we make, we do not decide on, on our own. We, we go to God first. Pupunta muna tayo sa Panginoon, mananalangin. Diba? Pag hindi ka pa rin sure, pupunta ka sa pastor, di ba? Or sa cell leader mo. Kasi bakit? Ang mga desisyon natin, hindi lang yung pang sarili at pang pamilya. Ang desisyon natin ay kung ano yung kalooban ng Diyos. Ito bang desisyon ko na ito makakapagbigay kapurihan pa sa Panginoon? Ito bang desisyon ko na ito matutuwa ba si Lord? Ito bang desisyon ko na ito marirepresent ko ba si Lord? Ito bang desisyon ko na ito meron bang, meron bang future gain ito para sa spirituality ko? Tama? Or it will go to benefit my family or the church. So number two, no? when we develop a habit of reading and doing the Word of God. So yan po, no? yung una, yung priority natin si Lord. Eh. Yung pangalawa, yung magdi-develop tayo ng habit. Nakakapag-develop tayo ng habit na nagbabasa na tayo ng salita ng Panginoon. Before wala tayong, before wala tayong appetite dyan eh. No? Before wala tayong, wala tayong ano, sa buhay, di ba? Before, wala tayong ganyan. Gusto natin magbasa or gusto mong ano, no? okay lang sa'yo. No? Or in, in, minsan okay, minsan hindi. So, makikita natin that malalaman natin na si Jesus ang sentro ng buhay natin kapag nakapag-develop na tayo ng habit na nagbabasa na tayo ng Bible and at the same time, ginagawa natin yung ating mga natututunan. Amen? May natututunan po ba tayo ngayon? Yan po yung n- number three, when we seek His face, no, pag ginahanap na natin yung mukha ng Diyos, and not just His face, but His ways in prayer. No, makikita natin yan na dati kasi pag gising natin ng umaga, pagkain ang hinahanap, putitinan mo yung mga bagay na, na, na gusto mo, pero kapag alam mo na sentro na si Lord sa buhay mo, I want you to identify it. I want you to, to see this. No? No? Pag gising ba ng umaga, hinahanap mo ba yung mukha ng Diyos? Hinahanap ba natin yung kanyang kalooban? when we seek His face and His ways in, in prayer. Kaya nagpe-pray tayo. Dati, magpe lang tayo kapag may problema, di ba? So, sa atin, magkikita natin na kapag sentro na si Lord sa buhay natin, no, He is our top priority. God's will is our top priority. Then, we read His word. It's a habit. At tingnan mo ngayon, kung talaga bang na-born in the spirit ka, talaga bang na-born again ka, di ba? Tingnan mo to. Ito ba yung manifestation at ito ba yung ah, uh, Uh, ano sa buhay mo? Ito ba yung meron sa buhay natin? No? Kasi ang tunay na ipinanganak sa spiritual at may spiritual pami- na pamilya, parang yung isang bata na ipinanganak, nagugutom yun. Nagugutom yun, nagnanais ng salita ng Diyos yun. Tama ba? No? Meron desire yun sa salita ng Diyos. Kaya dayo din, mga kapatid. No? Kaya tingnan natin, no? there are important truths no, about family. Your, your physical family 
your physical family will be with you about 70 or up to 100 years. Katotohanan na po ito. Pamilya mo, tatay mo, nanay mo, kapatid mo, 70 to 100 plus years. Makakasama yung physical family. Pero alam nyo, but your spiritual family will be with you forever. Di ba makakasama mo yan? Kasi from eternity to eternity. Pero, both family, spiritual family, and physical family are both important in our life. Mahalaga po yan sa bawat buhay po natin. No? Dalawang bagay po. There are two most important day of our life or of your life. First is the day when you are born. Second is the day you discover the reason why. So, pinaka-importanting araw ng buhay natin nung tayo pinanganak at nung malaman natin ng dahilan kung bakit tayo pinanganak. Kaya ito, hindi lang tayo basta pinanganak sa spirito, hindi lang tayo basta born again, hindi lang tayo basta nakakilala sa Panginoon at nasa church, nasa spiritual family. No, kadalasan kasi marami mga tao, yes, Christian sila, pero hindi sila hanggang doon na lang. They just go to church, they just go home, and then they do their daily routine. No, when you are saved, no, tandaan natin, we are not just saved to, to worship the Lord. We are also saved to serve others. And as we serve the Lord, it's a reflection of serving others. No, na kapag tayo nagsiserve kay Lord, no, may manifestation yon na nagsiserve tayo sa iba. Kaya nga, maraming mga mana ng palataya ngayon, they just go to church, they just listen. Pero hindi sila nagsiserve kay Lord. They, they have experience born in the flesh, born in the spirit, yung spiritual family. At gusto ko na pangatlo, na tingnan natin, that we should be born also in the ministry. Nandyan tayo sa, sa spiritual family, hindi lang para pumunta, umalis, hindi. Kundi kasama tayo dyan para tayo ay maglingkod sa Diyos. Kasama sa ministeryo. And there are a lot of people right now, they receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. They are happy reading the Word of God. But I want you to understand, hindi lang tayo mananatiling nakakilala at kasama sa pamilya. Kailangan naglilingkod tayo sa Panginoon. At tingnan nyo, isang, isang pamilya, pinanganak, nag-aral, nagtrabaho, tumulong, tapos nagkapamilya. ba? Diba? So, ganun eh. Ganun din sa atin. No, kung tayo ay dinala sa church, tayo ay naging kristyano, tayo ay nakakilala sa Panginoon, tayo ay ninourish spiritually, no? and then tayo ay tinulungan, lumago, hanggang sa magmature, and then kasama doon yung paglilingkod sa Panginoon. In fact, no, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 21, this is what it says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, the old has gone and the new has come. So, magikita natin dito, nung sabi dito, no, if anyone is in Christ, no, the old has gone and the new has come. So, ano yung mga bagay na bago na sinasabi dito? Kung dati, nung hindi tayo, nag, hindi tayo kristyano, hindi tayo naglilingkod kay Lord. Hindi tayo nagpapagamit kay Lord. Hindi tayo nag-sell group, hindi tayo ma-attend ng, ng, ng ano, di ba? Hindi tayo nagpapatraining, hindi tayo ma-attend ng cell, or hindi tayo, hindi tayo naglilid. Diba? Di ka naglilingkod kay Lord. So, yun yung lumang buhay natin. Nabubuhay tayo sa mali. But this time, sabi niya, ang sino man ang na kay Kristo, hindi, sino man ang nakipag-isa kay Kristo, wala na yung luma. Ano yung luma? Hindi naglilingkod kay Lord. Ano yung luma? Walang spiritual uh, consciousness. Di ba? Yung luma nating buhay. We are just born in the flesh. We are not just yet yet born in the spirit. Pero nung na born in the spirit na tayo, we, are, we belong to a certain spiritual family kailangan no maglingkod tayo sa Panginoon. Ano yun? The new has come. So ano yung new? Tingnan natin, basahin natin yung 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 next verse. Makikita natin ano ba yung new diyan. Okay. Verse 19 o 18. All this is from God. Tingnan niyo to ah. Yung luma nating buhay wala na bago na. And all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So, tingnan nyo, anong unang-unang ministry na binibigay ng Lord sa atin? Tayo ay naipagkasundo sa Kanya dahil tayo ay kalaban ng Diyos. Tayo makasalanan. Tayo nabubuhay dun sa, dun sa kadiliman. Diba? Pero tayo niligtas ng Diyos. Kinuha niya tayo mula sa kadiliman. Dinala niya tayo dun sa Kanyang kaharian. Tama ba? So now, 
And God, o Christ gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Yan yung unang-unang ministry na meron tayo. Nung tayo ay naipagkasundo sa Panginoon, dahil nagkaroon na ng kaayusan ng ating relasyon sa Panginoon, so God gave us the ministry. That's the ministry, reconciliation. We can reconcile other people to Jesus just like us before. May taong nagwing sa'yo, naglapit sa'yo sa Panginoon. May pinrit siyang gospel sa'yo, yung word ni Lord. Pinaniwalaan mo yung pananampalataya no? na establish, na, na, na stir up sa puso mo, tinanggap mo si Lord. Yung Espiritu ng Diyos nasa iyo para tulungan kanya, tulungan niya tayo para gawin at mabuhay dun sa kalooban ng Diyos. At tinanggal ni Lord yung heart of stone and He gave us the heart of flesh. At hindi lang nagtatapos dun. Kasi naipagkasundo tayo ng Diyos, ng ating Panginoong Yesus sa Ama. Tinubos niya tayo sa ating mga kasalanan. Sa, kanyang mga, sa pamagitan ng kanyang banala dugo, tayo napatawad. God gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Kaya lahat sa atin, no? yes, we are in the church, we belong to a certain family, a spiritual family. But I want you to understand, no? let us be born in the ministry. That there is, we should involve ourselves in the ministry. Sa gawain, anong unang-unang gawain? Hindi tamburin, hindi asiring, ano, reconciliation. Ano ibig sabihin ng reconciliation? No? Yung tinutulungan natin yung mga walang relasyon kay Lord na para maipagkasundo sa Kanya. Diba? Yung connection, yung rebuilding ng relationship, yung, yung nawala at naputol na relasyon ng tao sa Diyos, yun yung, yun yung ministry na una-una natin gagawin. That we will reconcile people to Christ. Amen? Let's continue reading in verse 19. Hinan natin sa verse 19. Okay? And God was reconciling the world to Himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them, and He has committed to us. Tingnan nyo, ha? Yung kanina, diba, He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Ito pa. Ito naman, He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So, He has committed to us the message. Yung kanina, He gave us the ministry He did not just give us the ministry of reconciliation. He committed to us the message of reconciliation. He gave us the ministry and He committed us to do the ministry of reconciliation. At tingnan nyo po, no? Verse 20. Tingnan natin sa verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassador. Tingnan nyo. As though God were making His appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Alam nyo ibig sabihin ng ambassador? It is a God's representative. Yan ang ibig sabihin yan. For example, nasa ibang bansa ka, for example, nasa Macau ka, merong tinatawag na Philippine Embassy dyan sa Macau. Kung nasa Hong Kong ka, meron din yan. Sa Amerika, meron din yan. Yun yung representation ng Pilipinas dun sa bansa na yon. Lahat ng pangangailangan ng mga tao doon sa lugar na yon, ang representation ng kanilang bansa, yung embassy. At doon sa loob ng embassy, meron tinatawag na ambassador. Yun yung tao na embodiment, na representation ng, ng, ng isang bansa. For example, sa Pilipinas. So, nire-represente niya yung bansa. So, ganun din sa atin. We are the representative of Christ wherever we go. So kailangan maintindihan natin 'yan. At kaya merong kaya merong merong ano doon, kaya merong ambassador doon. Kasi yung ambassador na 'yon, ipapatupad niya yung yung batas ng Pilipinas. At pangangalagaan niya yung mga Pilipino doon sa lugar na 'yon. So ganun din sa atin. Ipapatupad natin yung kalooban ng Diyos na kung nasaan man tayo, sa trabaho mo, sa pamilya mo, sa negosyo, sa barangay, sa city, sa province sa 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 bayan ng sa bansang Pilipinas at sa buong mundo wherever we go we should realize and understand that we are Christ representative we are Christ ambassador yan ang ibig sabihin niyan ano ibig sabihin niyan as though God were making his appeal through us tingnan niyo kapag merong gustong gawin si Lord ipapadaan niya sa iyo sasabihin niya sa iyo ganun eh kapag merong gustong sabihin yung 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 bansang Pilipinas doon sa embahada hindi naman yung uh, hindi naman yung presidente magsasalita kaagad eh. hindi papa 
i-relay ng presidente yung mensahe doon sa ambasador at yung ambasador ang magsasalita. Ganon din sa atin. Amen? Though God were making His appeal to us, i-represent natin siya saan man tayo nandoon. Kaya yung if we are born in the flesh, meron kang pamilya. If you are born in the spirit, meron ka rin pamilya. Spiritually, ito physically. At kapag nasa pamilya ka na ng spiritual, huwag lang tayong manatiling taga-upo, taga-kinig, kundi mag-involve tayo sa ministry. At ang unang-unang ministry na binigay ni Lord sa atin, yung He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He committed as the message of reconciliation. Ano pa? Ito, ginawa tayong ambasador. You know, verse 21. Tingnan natin sa verse 21. God made him who have no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Ano? Kaya, ito yung lifestyle of a life that is born in the ministry. Ito yung lifestyle. Hindi mo kasi po pwedeng sabihin na you are born in the ministry, tapos yung buhay mo ganun pa rin. Hindi, naglilingkod ka na eh. Naglilingkod na tayo. Pero ito yung lifestyle. Diba? Living as a new creation. Yan, yan, ang, yan ang makikita. Kasi bakit? Yung verse, yung binasa natin sa verse 17 kanina, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Basa natin dun eh. Diba? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the old has gone and the new has come. So, new creation na tayo ngayon. Ibig sabihin, tayo bagong nila lang na. So, kapag tayo bagong nila lang, meron tayong bagong buhay. Tama ba? Kapag may bagong buhay tayo, meron tayong bagong habit. Meron tayong dapat na bagong ginagawa. So ano yun? Living as a new creation, ano bang ginagawa natin? We pray. Dati hindi tayo nagpipray. Diba? And then ano, we pass. Kaya nga diba, may prayer and fasting tayo ngayon, mga kapatid. Diba? Matatapos siya ng August 4. Morning, diba? Morning po, breakfast. And then, we do the devotion. Ito yung bago sa atin. Dati hindi naman tayo nagbabasa ng Bible eh. Tapos ito pa, ano po yun? nag na cell group. Diba dati, anong cell group, cell group, basta nagsimba. Hindi, ito yun eh. Ito yung new creation. Ito, ito yung new things that happen. Tapos ano ba? Nag-church tayo ngayon, di ba? Online. Tapos may training. Lahat yan ngayon, no? Yung prayer, fasting, personal yan. Yung devotion, personal yan. Ngayon yung cell group, church and training, online yan. Kaya yung makikita natin, hindi tayo mananatiling nandun lang sa loob ng spiritual na pamilya, kundi tayo ay ipinanganak din no, na meron tayong bagong lifestyle. Uh, dahil tayo may bagong buhay, may mga bagong bagay na tayong dapat gawin. At makita pa natin sa binasa natin kanina. No? Ito yun. They have com- God committed us to... to no, God gave us the ministry and committed us no, to this reconciliation. So yung, yung pagkakasundo, yan ang mensahe natin, yan ang una-unang ministry natin. Hindi mahirap yan kasi bakit? Tayo na, 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 naayos yung relasyon natin sa Diyos eh. So we can also help other people na kung paano maging maayos din ang relasyon nila sa Panginoon. That's why we have the ministry of reconciliation. God gave us and committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. Tapos number three, no, yung pangatlo, no, ito yung proper representation no, as Christ ambassador. We are Christ ambassador. Yan yung, yan yung ano natin. No? Nire-represent natin si Lord wherever we go. Properly represent, representing Christ. No? Kung nagtatrabaho ka, nakikita si Christ sa'yo. Yung pag-uugali, diba? pananalita, kilos, nakikita si Lord. We are representative of Jesus no? wherever we go. Sa pamilya mo, representative ka ni Lord. Diba? Sa grupo na kung saan ka man naroon, representative ka ni Lord. Eh, tingnan nyo dito, no? Napaka-importante na maintindihan natin to that we can identify ourselves. No? We are born, no, merong three kinds of birth that we should experience. Number one, we are born. Ano yung number one? Born in the flesh. Ibig sabihin, may tatay ka, may nanay ka, may mga kapatid kang pisikal. ba? Diba? Pinakain ka, yun yung mga basic needs na kipinigay sa'yo. Then, pangalawa, born in the spirit. Diba nung na-born again ka, nung sa gospel na pinrich sa'yo, sa gospel na pinreset sa'yo, nakita mo kung gaano ka kamahal ni Lord at kung gaano ka, nagsakripisyo si Lord and then tinanggap mo. And then God has given us a spirit. Amen? He put a new spirit in us so that we can 
follow His decrees. Hindi yung masunod natin ang kalooban ng Diyos at ang utos ng Panginoon. At dahil doon, kapatid, no, when we are in a, dahil we are born in the Spirit, we have spiritual family. Yung inisa-isa ko kanina, ano yung mga bagay na natutunan natin? Ano yung mga bagay na nangyari sa buhay ko na po pwede rin mangyari sa buhay mo? And then, when we are already part of the spiritual family, no, then, we will not just stay the same. Kundi, magmamature tayo until to the point that we will be part of the ministry. We are saved not just to listen, not just to sit, but we are saved to serve the Lord. And as we serve the Lord, we will serve other people. Kaya mga kapatid, mga magulang at kapatid na nanonood ngayon, I want you to identify this. Talaga bang naborn again ka? Talaga bang naborn in the Spirit ka? Kasi may manifestation sa buhay natin. Kagaya ng isang bata na pinanganak, meron siyang hunger and thirst na um, nagugutom at nauuhaw. Ganon din sa atin. Kung tunay tayong naging kristyano, merong hunger sa atin eh. Merong gutom at kauhawan. Gutom sa salita ng Diyos at kauhawan sa kanyang presensya. At yan yung magpuprotect sa atin. Yan yung magtitrain sa atin. Yan yung tutulong sa atin para tayo para maintindihan natin yung kalooban ng Diyos at hindi lang maintindihan kundi magawa natin at para ma- makita natin yung vision ni Lord sa buhay natin at magawa natin kaya napaka-importante nito if you are watching on live stream right now wala ka pang relasyon sa Panginoon yes you are as you identify I am just born no in the flesh ibig sabihin pinanganak ka lang lahat tayo dapat natin pagdaanan yon born in the flesh. Pero, wala ka pang relasyon sa Panginoon. I'm telling you right now, surrender your life to God. Jesus died for you and for me. He redeemed me. Itinubos niya. Tinubos ng Panginoon yung aking mga kasalanan, yung ating kasalanan. Sa pamamagitan ng kanyang banaladugo, hinugasan niya yung ating mga kasalanan. Tayo'y pinawalang sala na parang hindi na nagkasala sa harap ng Panginoon. At dahil doon tayo ay pinawalang sala, pwede tayong mabuhay na maguli. Pwede tayong mabuhay na nagsisimula kasama ang Panginoon. He will restore. He will restore your right place. Sabi ng John 1.12, kung sino man ang tumanggap at naniwala sila ay binigyan ng karapatan para maging anak ng Panginoon. Everyone, so lahat tayo nilikha ng Diyos, pero hindi lahat anak ng Diyos. Yun lamang naniwala at tumanggap, sabi ng 1 John 1, verse 12. Those who believe and receive in His name, they were given the right to become the children of God. Kaya kapatid, paano mangyayari yun? If you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. May plano ang Lord eh. ba? Diba? Tapos yung problema, yun yung kasalanan. Pero tandaan natin, may paraan na. Yung ating Panginoong Yesus na matay sa krus. Kailangan natin gawin yung pagtanggap. Kapatid, it is not about religion. Just like uh, Nicodemus. Nagtanong siya eh. It's just a question. It's not, it's not the preaching of Jesus. But that question is very important. And the answer Because the question is very important. So, importante din ang sagot. Kaya nga, flesh give birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. Unless a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, yung born of water, makikita natin kanina dun sa binasa natin, yun yung salita ng Panginoon eh. Paano ka born again? Paano ka... Paano mo kikilalanin at maniniwala kung wala namang nag-share ng gospel sa'yo? At yun ang lilinis ng buhay natin. Yung kapangyarihan ng salita ng Panginoon. Kapangyarihan ng dugo ng ating Panginoon. Kaya kapatid, kung gusto mong magkaroon ng relasyon sa Panginoon, gusto mong isuko ang buhay mo sa Panginoon, maaring malaki ang problema mong pinagdadaanan. But I'm telling you, if you put Jesus as the center 
as the top priority of your life. He will set things in order. He will set things in your life into order. Aayusin ng Lord ang buhay mo. Sasamahan ka ng Panginoon. Kaya kapatid, if you are that person, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior at alam mo, si Kristo lang ang pag-asa mo. Pag-asa natin. May pag-asa ka. Huwag mong sabihin wala kang pag-asa. Because of what is happening, there's an hopeless situation. There is hope in Jesus Christ. Tayo makasalanan. Pero namatay siya para sa ating kasalanan. Pinawalang sala niya tayo. Ganon ang Lord, kapatid. At pwede niyang i-restore no, yung buhay mo. Nung tayo dati kalaban ng Diyos, pwede i-restore ni Lord at pwede kang maging anak ng Diyos. Lahat tayo nilikha ng Diyos. Diba? Everything. In Genesis, we are created by God. But not all are sons of God. Only those who accept and believe, they were given the right to become the children of God. So ngayon, mananalangin po tayo. This is a prayer, not the changing of religion. No, it's not about religion. It is about our relationship to be the son and daughters of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are that person, you want to surrender your life, you want to have a relationship with Him, I want you to follow this prayer. Sundan niyo po itong panalangin na ito. Sabi mo, Panginoon, patawarin niyo po ako sa aking nagawang pagkakasala. Nasa, naisip, nasalita o nagawa. Sinasadya man o hindi, patawarin niyo po ako. Kinikilala ko po na ako isang makasalanan. Kinikilala ko, Jesus, na ikaw ay namatay doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo para sa aking kaligtasan. Tinatanggap kita, Jesus, bilang Diyos at aking sariling tagapagligtas. Paghari ka sa aking buhay. Mula sa oras na ito, ikaw ang masunod. Ikaw ang maghari sa aking buhay. Ang pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, no, I would just like to congratulate you kung yun ay galing sa puso mo, kapatid, no, tinalikuran mo, tinanggap mo ang Panginoon, then, sabi nung binasa natin kanina, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the old has gone and the new has come. Something has happened in your life. Powerful in the Spirit. And there are new things na dapat mong gawin. Mag-pray ka, mag-devotion ka. And then, kung nanunood ka ngayon, mag-message ka, kung sino man ang nagtag sa'yo, or mismo sa page na yan, kapatid, mag-message ka, sabi mo, I want to grow in my faith. Help me. Then someone, spiritual people, who will going to help you to grow in your faith. At para naman sa mga, sa mga nasa church, sa mga nasa church family, you are not just saved to sit. We are saved to serve God. And as an our expression of serving God is we serve people. Ay mga kapatid, lahat po tayo dapat maintindihan nito. We are born in the flesh, we have physical family, we are born in the spirit, we have spiritual family, and we belong to the spiritual family. Then, there is a desire no, to serve the Lord in the ministry. We are born in the ministry. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to hear this message. The truth about being born in the flesh, in the spirit, and even in the ministry. I pray, God, that each and every one of us, through the power of your word, that we have received it, that you have spoken to us, that you have speak to each and every one of us, Lord, na kung meron kaming kailangan ayusin, Panginoon, kung kailangan, Panginoon, na, na that there is something wrong in our hearts, in our lives, in our lifestyle, Lord, kailangan ayusin namin. So help us, Lord. If we are in the spiritual family, Lord, wala pa sa ministry, Lord, yung cell group minister of reconciliation, winning people, evangelizing people, making them disciples, Lord. If we were, na, if our lives, Lord, is not a good representation of your, of your kingdom, Lord God, forgive us, Panginoon. And we want to represent you well in our family, in the marketplace, in the workplace, wherever we go, na ikaw ang makita sa amin. Kami representative mo, Panginoon we can advance your kingdom here on earth. We can win people. You will 
we will help them to grow as they mature that we they will serve you also we thank you we love you in jesus name amen and amen and amen god bless you no god bless you po mga kapatid no inabati ko lahat ng ating mga primary 12 ang mga mom poor poor mga cell leaders and of course yung mga pastors na nanonood ngayon yung member natin sa Macau, Hong Kong, uh, Hawaii, Canada, and then Australia, then sa Pangasinan, wherever you are, no? Saudi, meron din sa, sa Qatar, meron din sa Qatar, okay? So, God bless you po, no? Uh, tandaan po natin, no? If you are born in the Spirit, the next is, should be born in the ministry, nagpapagamit tayo sa Panginoon. Amen ba? So now, no? Uh, wala pa ho tayong ano wala pa ho tayong physical gathering no but uh, we are uh, still doing the ministry online kaya meron po tayong uh, diyan no you can give your tithes you can return your tithes and give your offering meron po diyan naka-flash po sa screen okay naka-flash po yan sa screen yung ating bank account and then you can send it and then mag-screenshot po kayo ng inyong uh, offering na na bank transfer or you re- return your tithes uh, dun sa cell kay Ate Delia no? Sister Delia at saka kay Gretch at saka kay Mami kay Pastor Jeanette okay and of course yung ating mga uh, online na ating mga ser- services corporate prayer Monday no 6.30pm po yan si Pastor Gerald and then midweek service so Wednesday no si Pastor Daddy Paul po no yung ating senior pastor from Pambanga yung nagturo nung nakaraan at siya, siya pa rin po magtuturo sa atin sa Wednesday and Friday si Pastor Richard po ng TBCH Hawaii yung pastor po natin sa Hawaii and then online training po no um, Saturday po yan 8pm and then Sunday cell celebration 1.30 ito po no um, SOL 2 Batch 1 Monday 8.30 po yan and then uh, meron po tayong lesson kay Daddy Paul no yung about sa doctrine basic doctrine ng Tuesday 7 pm Sol 1 Bats 2 ayan nagboom na po yan ng Wednesday 8:30 Life Class Bats 3 ano na po yan Thursday 8:30 then yung TBCH quarantine training po natin every Saturday po yan I hope and pray no this is just the first time that uh, we do our premiere no na uh, recording I hope na maging maayos ito no, na makarating sa inyo ito ng, ng loud and clear yung message natin. Okay? Let us all stand. We will pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to, to tune in in this live stream. We thank you, Lord God, for the importance of understanding that we are born in the flesh, born in the spirit, and born in the ministry so that in this very, very important truth, Lord God, that as we discover, as we were able to understand this, Lord God, that we will not just stay the same, but we will mature, we will grow as we serve you. Bless those people who are able to watch this live stream financially, spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, in all aspects of their lives. I release the blessing that comes from the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit be upon you. Receive that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you all. God bless you.